Welcome to Real Herbalism Radio, show 274, recorded at Big Dog Studios in Eugene, Oregon. Today's show is brought to you by Be Real Botanicals at the Real Herb Market. Skin care that'll make you feel like a queen. Brenda Bigelow of Be Real Botanicals knows how to create the kind of luxury you'd expect to find in a palace, all from wildcrafted and carefully selected natural ingredients. Find them at therealherbmarket.com slash shop slash www BeRealBotanicals.com. So exhaustion, collapse, nervous exhaustion, breakdown, adrenal fatigue, mental breakdown, fried, drained, weary, worn out, stale, devoured, beat. Mental burnout has a thousand names. All of them spell trouble. Today we're talking about what it means to be utterly exhausted and how to lean into herbal medicine and natural approaches to fix it. Now, here are your hosts. I'm Candace Hunter. And I'm Patrick Hunter. And welcome, welcome to, to Real Herbalism, Herbalism Radio. Radio. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Candace. I have a meta woman. Her name is Burdette Ann. She's from Love Light, Love Light and Healing. Um, she's an herbal practitioner in Alberta, California. She's really amazing at herbalism and also at doing energy medicine and that sort of thing. She combines the two practices for people. I met her through the Herbal Circle, which is uh, the group that Yolanda Joy of the Herbal Entrepreneur runs. And right at the beginning of August, she put out this um, blog post. And the blog post was, yes, I did burn out. Here is how it felt, which I thought was a lovely title. And I thought personally, I was like, well, it takes a lot of courage to even admit that you did as an herbal practitioner, especially as like a health coach and energy medicine practitioner, which she is. Uh, but it was really important for us to recognize that that's actually a real thing. And a lot of us are starting to feel it, especially after COVID and trying to, you know, keep ourselves going through all of that and then trying to recover from COVID, you know, from the, all the shutdowns and everything else. So today I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what is exhaustion and one of the things that Bernadette pointed out in her article was that she didn't recognize it. And that happened to me too. It was not, you know, this was a few years back. You were the one actually that recognized it. And in her case, her husband also was, you know, he, he helped her awaken to the fact that that's where she was at. So I was thinking maybe you could kind of share with us a little bit about some of the ways to recognize that your partner or yourself, that, you know, either of you, you or your loved ones are running themselves into the state of exhaustion. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, your closest friends and family are even the ones that might mm-hmm. might see it before anybody else, um, especially because we put on that private versus personal face. Um, yeah, but, it totally sneaks up on you. Right. So yeah. here's some of the stuff I think, you, you know, you should look for in your partner or your loved one and yourself. So there's quite a few, actually. Um, and, not, you know, not the whole list doesn't mean you have it or doesn't have it. And, and just because you might be in and in, you know, have insomnia doesn't mean you have burnout. But these are the things to watch for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So some of the signs of, of burnout, you know, like we say, okay, insomnia. Okay. Hold on. So now what? insomnia, can you tell me what that is? I mean, obviously it's not getting enough sleep, <coughs> but it can have a couple different looks. Well, it. it's not just that you can't get to sleep. It can be things where you get to sleep fine, but then within two hours you're awake and then you can't fall asleep again. Uh, the other thing that it can be is it can be part of that racing mind. Yeah. Where you know you're in bed and those thoughts are over and over and over again, um, so insomnia can be that. I mean, we have that. We, we always see that 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 typical clinical insomnia where somebody's running around and you know their eyes are big and bulging and they're getting zero sleep for days on end. Right. Insomnia doesn't right. have to be days on end. It can be literally every night you're not sleeping well and it just starts to build up. Yeah, like you wake up and you're not feeling refreshed, or yeah. middle of the afternoon you're just too tired. You have to you, you have, have to take, take a nap. nap. You have to take a nap. So that that's so insomnia as we think about it, and that that more of um the acute thing that everyone talks about uh, insomnia, but it's really it can be you know this other part where you didn't even think it was right, where you can't fall back asleep, you have racing mind, those types of things. Um, fatigue and chronic fatigue would be another. Um, yeah, and they're often linked with insomnia. They are. I mean, obviously, if you um. If you have or are suffering from bouts of insomnia, I mean, you're going to come up with fatigue a lot faster. Um, and if it continues, it can be chronic. You know, fatigue is one of those words where you can be tired. You know, you can be worn out for the day. 
you know, you may have done a lot that day. Maybe you pulled weeds out of the garden and you're, right. you know, that kind of thing. You, you're yeah. just tired. You're, you're kind of exhausted because of, of yeah. physical ex- exhaustion, but not, but not the other yeah. part. Fatigue really encompasses not only the physical side of it, but the mental side of it. And that idea that just getting up off the couch can be a problem just because you're so exhausted. You're so tired. I'm yes. so fatigued. You just don't have the yeah. energy. Right. And, and it's oftentimes, it's not like, like you said, it's not just like, oh, well, last weekend I put in some extra hours troubleshooting this website or weeding the garden and I'm super tired today as a result. Right. It's, that happens like every week, all mm-hmm. the time. It keeps yeah. happening. Right, right. Um, another thing that 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 can uh, be part of this, and this is the one that, that I think a lot of people just have in general. I, I have it too, and, and but I think it might be linked. And that would be lack of focus or trouble concentrating. And, oh, man. Uh, you know, I know <laughs> in a given day, I mean, my list of to-dos is quite extensive. In fact, I have a whole software program developed, or not that I develop, but I, I, I buy it just so it can help me uh, keep everything organized with all the to-dos, all the tasks, all the things right. that I need to have done. Because if I didn't have something like that, I would be – scattered brained and i and you know i do have even you know i notice sometimes during the day i'll need to bring up quick facts from my mind right and i can't yeah that's a li- that's definitely a I, sign. I, I can't and you used to be able to yeah I, you I, didn't I, used to look like this <laughs> yeah you used to look better uh but yeah. I, and i notice that and so what i'll end up doing when that starts to happen is i'll, I'll you know i'll get away from the computer for a moment maybe do some deep breathing and just kind of recenter myself but yeah oftentimes yeah. that that or you like You've got to get something done and you grab the thing. You're going to run into the other room and take care of it. And you get into the other room and you're like, why am what I am I here? Yeah, what am I, I doing? Here? Yeah, exactly. Why yeah. am I here? Yeah. So that lack of focus and t- trouble concentrating. Again, you know, some of these things are built upon each other. You right. Know? So if right. you have insomnia, you might have yeah. lack it's of focus. It's harder to focus when you're not sleeping. And you well. may, you know, so it kind of just builds up a little bit. Yep. You know, and with those three things that we just mentioned, you know, the fourth thing is is illness. You know, your immune system is not working as well as desired. Um, you have extra allergies. You have colds. You could have blues, viruses more than usual. When you right. are when you're facing burnout, you're it's like a depletion of all resources, and yeah. that includes your immunity. Um, it's all intertwined, and it all works together. So if you're not doing well in general, you're you know, an allergy, you might have a really bad allergy season that you've never really had a bad allergy season before. And right. nothing's really changed. You haven't moved. It's, the plants yeah. are the, still the same. It's your immune system is so exhausted. It exactly. becomes utterly overreactive. Exactly. It's kind of like what the Chinese medicine practitioners talk about empty fire. Mm-hmm. It's that kind of thing where it's this ridiculous overreaction or it just, like you said, you just keep, you keep coming down with colds or you get a cold and it lasts for flipping ever because you can't seem to quite kick it. Exactly. No. Yeah. Another uh, sign uh, is appetite and not, and it can be either side of the spectrum. You could, you could lose your appetite and not eat and have a weight, have some weight gain or weight yeah, loss. Yeah. That's right? the one that they always focus on. Right. Oh, loss of appetite. And then but I can tell weight. you that for me, when I get really tired and, and worn out, oh I eat. God. Oh yeah, total comfort eating. I eat and, and I eat insatiable. and I eat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So my appetite goes the other way. Yeah. So I eat a lot more than I should, and which is yeah. counterproductive because I'm not doing as much because I'm burned out. Right. right. Yes. Um, yes. So weight gain and weight loss is there, but appetite kind of works on both sides of that scale. You could like not eat, or on the other side, like like Candace and I, you, you could. Eat, eat too eat, much, eat too and much. then you're gaining, and Ooh. then you're gaining, and then you're feeling bad. And about then yeah, it. so that's cyclical unto itself. You know, um, you know, another, another thing that another sign to look for, um, you know, is, you know, anxiety, your depression, fear of failure. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm going through, uh, some things right now where, um, I have a fear of failure and I don't know if it's, it's in this case to wind with a feeling of burnout or, or exhaustion, um, but not, but it's that those ideas. So you, your mind needs all the things it needs but you know if it doesn't get those things you can have you know anxiety over simple situations that never bothered you before right you know um yeah. depression like you just wanting to get off the couch i don't want to use the big d for people that are chronically depressed and that, yeah you know, people that, that you know, have clinical depression yeah, that's different that's different you know this is more along but, the lines of your 
cyclical. It's yeah. you're feeling down. You're you're out. I don't want, again don't want to minimize someone that's dealing with with, with depression. But to that right. you could call it sadness if you wanted to. You know, right, whatever, but, but yeah. feeling depressed and having those judgment thoughts going through your head, and then worrying about your your future or your past or anything. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a lot of these things are actually linked with clinical depression, but it doesn't mean that if you're facing exhaustion, it doesn't mean it's a lifetime clinical depression. Right. But it can get really serious. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to minimize the depression or the anxiety that comes with exhaustion because that just makes the whole, the whole situation way worse. For sure. You know, when you have these, all these things kind of, you know, that, that we've already talked about, insomnia, fatigue, lack of focus, all these things, appetite, anxiety, depression, the other thing that starts to develop off of this is the physical stuff. Oh, yeah. Your body gets Your body in, starts to do its thing. It throws and, its, its right, signs up. Right. Yeah. So you'll have, you could have uh, tachy, tachycardia or, you know, racing heart, yeah. um, chest pains, dizziness, you know, fatigue even. I mean, it just, your body will start to react. You can have heat and hot flashes. You have night sweats, headaches. Yeah. You may see a doctor to be safe because some of that stuff could be something yeah. else as well. But, yeah. but these are things to watch out for as in conjunction. It's an over, it's an overview of, of what we're seeing for signs. Yes. In fact, I think a lot of middle-aged women and women who are n not quite middle-aged, like in your 30s and 40s, but heading into the, the perimenopausal years can easily mistake exhaustion for perimenopause or the beginning signs of menopause. Oh, yeah, totally. Because so many of them are the same thing. And part of it when you're going through menopause is your body is exhausted. Your body is making these massive hormonal changes and your life didn't adjust to accommodate that in our modern Western world. So you get a lot of those extra exhaustion-like signs. But burnout and perimenopause are not the same thing. No, no, they're not. And when you start moving down these these things, the other thing that will happen and has happened to me is like an irrational anger over little things. Yeah. Uh, irritability, you know, mood swings. You're super happy one moment and you're angry the next. Um, you know, I had a lot of this earlier on in my life, um, especially yeah. when we first started the business and there was a lot of financial pressure. I was yeah. working, working, working. I was burning out and – I was just getting, I was angry. I mean, I, I would fly off the handle mm -hmm. with, with somebody did something that was tiny. I mean, I don't know how many times I probably yelled at Finn for something that was minimal, but I was just angry because of something else and taking it out of him. So Yeah, we had a know. few rip roaring arguments when he was younger because he did things and he did things that, you know, warranted a response, just not the excessive not the response. excessive <laughs> yeah. response, yeah. And I mean, I've been there too. You know, when sure. I, that was one of the things you noticed when I was heading into exhaustion a few years back. You were like, yeah, you got the mood swings. A little cranky. <laughs> <laughs> and then I bit your head off for saying it. All right. Now, another sign that can go in with some of the things that we were talking about earlier about, um, um, you know, um, being tired and and uh, lack of focus and, and those types of fatigue and chronic fatigue is you know, your lack of motivation. Yeah. Low energy, you know, despair, maybe even hopelessness. You can't seem to get stuff done. I mean, um, all of us seem to have to-do lists. I have to-do lists for work. I have to-do lists at home. And sometimes I can't get to them. And then there are days where I just, I know they're there. And it just takes all of my energy to get one thing done. Yeah. And yeah. I, because I, I don't want to. Yeah. You know, I just don't want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is really apparent when you have, a, whether it's you or your partner or loved one who used to be super productive and get stuff done and always seem to be like so many things they did or they accomplished and then right. they're not doing anything. Right. And they're ineffective at the things they are doing and either not caring or getting irritable if you mention it, if you ask about it. Well, you know, part of yeah. the and that irritability comes out because they they too know themselves. They're, they're judging. They're, they're judging, judging themselves, themselves, and then and you're calling it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, with uh, with that part also comes this, these other signs, which you know you can feel detachment, you can feel um, isolation, you can be pessimistic or cynical. Um, that's that's and it's not how it's more un uncharacteristic or new to you. You know, right, changes. You, you, yeah, yeah, you can ha you you can have like in our house we have we give each other a day or two to be to be this. Yeah, it's okay to be like 
all detached and isolationist and just not want to talk to anyone for a day or two. Yeah. But after that, we, we, yeah, yeah. we, we, didn't, it, we don't want that not, happen. It's not so right. good after that. Right. But, and some of us like me need more time alone to decompress and just rejuvenate. If you start to get isolationist, you're very extroverted and you're a very social person. And when you start to get like, apathetic about what other people are doing and the the opportunities to get out and hang out with your friends right then i know that's a bad sign <laughs> well, one of the things too i wanted to mention is that when we talk about go back a little bit when we talk about appetite mm -hmm. and I, it's not just i think appetite for food because that is a thing yes um but it's also um and i've been guilty of this it's the self-medication where yeah you'll one of the other signs that you can look for is is i think an increase in alcohol consumption alcohol uh, smoking smoking any of the any any stimulants or depressions anything like things that, like that yeah. that you're using to help um change it like maybe suddenly you start drinking a lot of red bull yeah or know. it used to be one one cup of coffee in the morning and now, now it's, it's a pot of cup of coffee yeah. or or it was a beer you know, at night just yeah. because it was a nice hot day now it's six beers at night and yeah. you you know or it's a beer every night right you right know? You know, and these yeah. things you know these kinds of things so that's something it's i wanted to mention subtle, is like some of those are somewhat subtle pattern changes but they are really important if you notice the signs or notice that you're starting to go that that path or your partner is or whomever if you catch it early, it's a lot easier to reverse it. And there's a really good book about, um, um, the, you know, about this, and it, it's the it's called the Telltale Signs of Burnout. Do you have them? It's by Sherry Borg Carter of Psych. And it's in Psychology Today. I think it's an article. It's an article. It's an yeah, article, the, yeah, the online magazine. Yeah, it's not. So if Today. if you are interested more, again, that's um, the Telltale yeah. Signs of Burnout. Do you have them? And that's by Sherry Borg Carter, Psychology Today. I think we'll have the link. Yeah, there'll in the be show link notes. in the show notes, yeah. Um, so that, that you can see that. You know, and again, it's a good read. It's, it's a nice way to, you know, Evaluate. just to see what you have. It's almost like a flow chart. Are you, you know, going down and, and seeing these things? I mean, you might know you have burnout immediately and you may not know you have burnout. When we're busy in, in our hectic lives and we're yeah. doing all these things, you may see, say to yourself, well, I'm not suffering burnout. I'm getting all this stuff done. Right. But it's how you react at home. How are you sleeping? How are things going on? I mean, sure, you may right. be productive at the office. But you're not really productive at home. So that's the one place you're putting energy, but now you're putting energy somewhere else. So that yeah, could be. When, when you called me out on it, <laughs> <laughs> I was in a place where I didn't recognize that that's what had happened. I knew something was wrong. I knew, I knew things weren't right. And I tried many different ways to deal with each of the symptoms, but I never put them together to recognize the whole pattern. It took you seeing from the outside to be able to say, hey, you know, I noticed you're really moody. I noticed that you never have energy. I noticed that the things that once gave you joy, you're not even doing them. And when you do, you're apathetic about them. And, you know, I noticed you're really moody. <laughs> <laughs> the, the moody part really came up a couple of times. And I was. I was very moody. Right. And I didn't even recognize that that, plus I was having problems with anxiety and panic attacks. They were worse. I mean, I've had those, had had those off and on throughout my life. But they were worse than ever before at that point. And I would have migraines that would knock me out for multiple days instead of just a single day. Right. You know, you noticed all of those things. You saw those patterns and were able to help me recognize that that's where I was at. And that was, you know, eye-opening. Mm -hmm. So recognizing burnout could be the easy part. Yeah, right. You know, we can always identify things. But but fixing it, now that's... That's the hard part. That is so true. You know, yes, on yes. all things. I mean, we spend years building our lifestyle into whatever it is it, it that it is. And you just slowly say yes to things. Sure, I'll do this. Sure, I'll do that. Oh, I can handle this. I can handle that. Next thing you know, every minute, every ounce of energy you have is taken up in doing and you start to believe that if you fail in any of these things, that you'll be an utter failure. You, you put end up, it's very easy to start putting, assigning a really high priority to everything. And then you're exhausted and you didn't even know how you got there. You know, mm -hmm. it's so easy to get that point. And it totally creeps up against, creeps up on you. I mean, so it's, it's possible. I mean, it's going to take time. It took me several years to figure out how to and to slowly recover from the burnout state I was in. And 
if you, the sooner you figure it out, you know, the better off you are. I was at a point where it was definitely affecting my physical body in strong ways. Thankfully, I didn't have to get to a point of like hospitalization. Some people do, but you know, it, it takes a long, it can take a long time. If you recognize it before that sooner, then you can change it, fix it, but you can also get off the burnout path and therefore avoid getting burned out in the future. So what's the first thing to fix? And the first thing is definitely rest. And that means sleep, of course, but it also means giving yourself periods during your day where you can rest. So you're not expecting yourself to fill every last minute with something productive. We really need as human beings to have periods of relative quiet thinking, as it were. And then we need playtime. That's really, really important. And that's another thing that oftentimes those of us who are getting ourselves into a state of burnout have slowly eliminated the play. So the play part is the way that you feed yourself. You feed your spirit. You give yourself energy by playing. Mm -hmm. And when you keep saying yes to the work parts where the energy is expended, then you're not giving yourself time to fuel the tank, as it were. Right. Um, well, won't that just kind of fix the problem? You're getting more sleep, you're getting more rest. Won't that just fix it? Right. Yeah. It doesn't really fix it. It'll, it'll help and it'll bandaid it for a bit, but you've got to take care of yourself beyond that. And that means letting go of a lot of expectations. It means changing the way that you talk to yourself, you know, stopping yourself from doing all, all those judging thoughts which a lot of times those thoughts can seem like you don't have any control over them. So that's part of where the exhaustion, when you're really tired and you have no energy, you can't stop yourself from hearing the judgy things. Oh, if you don't get that done, you're just going to be a failure. Oh, did you see the way your kid looked at you when you said no to taking him to the park? Oh, you know, all of those things, you know, all those thoughts, mm -hmm. those are the things that the more tired you are, the stronger they are. So, even though you start to get sleep and rest and all of that, they're still there and you need to change them because those are the thoughts that drive you into the state of exhaustion in the first place. I have a new bookmark for you to add to your browser, therealherbmarket.com. This is your new go-to for all your herbal products. It's your one-stop shop. You can peruse the many stores from verified herbalists from around the country, allowing you to shop locally if you prefer or to get an herbal from an herbalist that specializes in products you do not have access to. Visit therealherbmarket.com to shop for your next salve, tincture, or tea. Then make sure to bookmark it and come back. See them again at therealherbmarket.com. You've got to take care of your body and your nervous system. So that's not just making sure that you have diet and fitness and you're doing that stuff. I mean, it's possible to burn yourself out on exercise. Yeah. And athletes really have to, they struggle with that. You know, and it looks like they're doing so great, you know, the perfect diet, the perfect perfect fitness plan, but the reality is they're expending way too much energy. Mm -hmm. And or they, they, as well as the rest of us, have problematic things in our life and our diet. You've got to eliminate those. If you don't, they will continue to eat up your energy and you'll be more likely to not recover from burnout or not avoid it again. Mm -hmm. So those are really important. And then you might need to seek some help. And a lot of us do. I definitely have needed to seek help. And help is things like, you know, therapy. Might be talk therapy. Go actually just get a, a counselor or a psychiatrist or a psychologist, whatever is the right thing for you. But seek help in dealing with the mental states that you're dealing with. It might be alternative types of therapy. I saw a shaman for many years. And just the opportunity to talk and make sense of the things that I was experiencing through the modality of how he worked with me mm -hmm. worked. It, it was amazing. You know, it might be seeking other modalities, acupuncture, Reiki, uh, massage therapy, you know, whatever. You know, there's many, many different therapies that you may want to address. At one point, I saw a chiropractor because the anxiety wasn't going away. And I, the massage therapist I was seeing to help me release the tension so that I could sleep pointed out that there are a couple of vertebrae in your back that if they're ever so slightly misaligned, they can cause anxiety, panic attacks, and racing heart. Yeah. And if your heart starts to race because the nerve is pinched, that will then Im almost immediately go into 
a panic attack or an anxiety state. And then that can crash into depression. And it was one adjustment. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, seeking help is really important. Um, a coach, you know, someone who will help you. We A lot of times we think of coaches as being like a life coach to help you attain your goals and become the person you want to be. Or a business coach who are gonna, who's going to help you get all the change your business and get all the the sales that you wanted to get or be more productive or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, or a wellness coach who's going to put you on the perfect diet. Sometimes you need a coach to help you know when to say when, to help you recognize that, you know, you need to get balance back into your life. You need to balance your business or whatever it is that you need to balance. A coach can be really helpful for that. Well, that's a lot to tackle. I mean, that's, that's quite a bit. Yeah. It's good we've got lots of herbs to work with, though, so let's talk about some of those to help. Yeah. Well, where would you like to start? Well, I mean, the nervous system, it's, you know, it's hard to get any rest or sleep when your nerves are fried, so we've said that that's one of the biggest things, so let's start there. That is so true, and we've, we've got a lot, and there's a lot of plants who are willing to just jump in and help us out with managing our nervous system. The first thing I'm going to talk about is some herbalists may not really consider flower essences an herbal remedy, but I very much do. And rescue remedy is one of my like favorite go-tos when you've got anything that's overstimulating, anything that's like panic attacky, anything that creates in your body or your mind the feeling of a shock. So the boss just dropped a new deadline and said, oh, you know, you needed it to have it done by five. Guess what? Now it's noon. You know, I'm, I'm cutting mm -hmm. off five hours. Something just changed in our production schedule and whatever. And that shock wave goes through you as you suddenly realize that deadline's going to be really hard to meet. That's a rescue remedy situation. No, nobody was hit by a car and there's mm -hmm. not a fire raging, but your body and your mind and your psyche, everything about you will react as if it's a shock. So rescue remedy is a really... Excellent one. And that's Bach. Um, it's a Bach is the rescue remedy, but other brands use the term five flower remedy. Okay. And the flowers that you're looking for is Star of Bethlehem, which is usually used to help comfort. Rock Rose, which helps you get rid of the fear. Clematis helps you get your mind focused so you can deal with whatever it is you've got to deal with. Impatience gives you the, the plant. Impatience gives you patience. Just kind of the opposite, right? <laughs> but you go to them when you are impatient. And it helps you slow yourself down because a lot of times moving faster in an emergency situation or a shocking situation creates more mistakes and, and problems. If you slow down and have patience with the process, a lot of times it'll go faster and much more smoothly and successfully. And then cherry plum is usually in there and that helps you keep your composure and not, you know, lose it on the boss. Or anybody else. Right. You know? So that, that helps you handle, you know, panic and overstimulation. So another component with that, or that that's that's like when you're in the in the moment of a shocking thing. Sure. When you're looking at overall exhaustion, one of the signs that we talked about was the racing mind. Mm -hmm. Especially racing mind, like when you're trying to go to sleep or you're trying to just have one of those quiet periods during the day. Mm -hmm. And your mind just won't stop and it just keeps going. And sometimes it's in circles and it's saying the same thing over and over and it circles around. And you try to solve the problem, but it circles around again. And everything just keeps running like an, like one of those uh, Arubaruses, the snake that eats its tail. Oh, okay. One of those. Um Skullcap helps to settle those thoughts. And when you pair that, one of my favorite pairings for exhaustion is skullcap and motherwort because motherwort helps to support the heart center and helps to calm like tachycardia and racing heart and anxiety. And then that combined with skullcap settling your mind, the two of them help you just settle down and find peace again, mm -hmm. kind of get your feet back on the ground. So that's a really good one to be taking regularly when you're dealing with exhaustion, especially if you see those kinds of overthinking signs or the anxiety and racing heart kind of stuff. Okay. If, however, you tend toward more digestive shits, problems, upsets. Okay. Gurgling, unpleasantness, oh, the cramping. Oh, God, they just told me that deadline and I feel it right in my stomach. Or I'm worrying about how I'm going to manage 
whatever the next thing is that's coming up and your stomach is just not right. One of my favorite combinations for that is chamomile, lemon verbena, and wood bentony. Chamomile helps get rid of the cranky unpleasantness and helps to soothe and smooth the digestive system, especially at your stomach level. Lemon verbena is, it brings this lightness and this joy back into your system and allows your, the nervous system in your digestive system because you're half of half, I can't remember the actual percentage, but like half of our nervous system is contained in our digestive system. Mm -hmm. And so what your digestive system experiences will reflect in how you experience the world and how your nerves are in general. So an upset digestive system can create around you a lot more upset or create for you the feeling or perception of upset, which often then if you perceive something as upsetting, then more upsetting things come your way. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So by working with the digestive system with lemon verbena to help, you know, soothe and calm that, that helps. And then wood betony works at the stomach chakra level to help you feel empowered as if you have the energy and the capacity and the power to handle whatever you have to handle. So the three of those together really help a lot with soothing digestive system, particularly the nervous system aspect. So that's one of my other favorite combos. Um, there's also oats, goji berry and Melissa, which is another good one for generally for the nervous system. Melissa or lemon balm helps to, give you sort of like brightens your day, you know, mm -hmm. just, it's a good one, especially when depression is a part of your regular experience of exhaustion. And the depression doesn't have to be depression because, oh, this terrible thing happened and I'm upset about it. It's just that sort of like the whole world just seems like this weird shade of gray and I'm too tired to deal with it. That kind of depression. Lemon balm is helpful for that. SADS is one of the um, seasonal affective disorder, disorder yeah. is one of the ones that Melissa has got mm -hmm. a particular affinity for. And then you pair that with goji berry, which is also called wolf berry or Chinese wolf berry and also called lychee berry. It's That one's just generally building to the whole system, to the whole body. And it it paired with oat tops or oat straw. Oat tops and oat straw are very nutritive. They have some mild um, nervine, nervous system settling types of properties, but overall they're just supportive. Um, when you're taking them, this combination as a tea, which is how you would take this, you're going to get a lot more of the nutritive and building and you know just generally supportive elements from it. Milky oats is the one of oats that you take specifically for nervous exhaustion in tincture form. So you could take that and then make the wolfberry and Melissa tea, mm -hmm. you know, that would work or goji berry and Melissa tea. Um, one of the things that we, a lot, a lot of people talk about when there's been, when you need to like calm yourself and focus, people talk about going to tea. And when I'm talking about tea here, I'm talking about, you know, capital T tea, Camellia sinensis, you know, black, white, green, yellow, red, sure. poor. <clears throat> There's many different types of tea. If you're dealing with exhaustion, you really should avoid oolongs, blacks, and pours. Why them versus like green, which has caffeine to it too? Green has caffeine, but doesn't have nearly as much. Okay. The, the, um, they call it a fermentation process, but really it's an oxidization process that's used to make the oolongs and the blacks and the pours. That enhances the stimulant properties in Camellia sinensis oh, okay. or tea. So white, yellow, and green are good ones. And if you're in deep into exhaustion, I would say maybe early in the day when I was that deep into it, I actually eliminated tea entirely. And for me, that was a tough one because Camellia sinensis is one of my go-to comforts. Right. You know, so... But I, my nervous system was so overwrought that I needed to. And, sure. you know, there you go. There's a couple of rocks. So this isn't really herbs, but far as I'm concerned, rocks and crystals are really good medicine. And when you're dealing with exhaustion and you want to help your nervous system. So before you would, before we get into the rocks and minerals, 
Yeah. How would you put those into your life? I mean, you're not going to have a big boulder in your yard. So <laughs> right. What, 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 what I carry you... them. Honestly, I carry them so with me. So you have me. some stones with yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. And right. I, and I sometimes I sleep with them and sometimes I just sit down and sit with them. You know, just hold it at my heart level if I'm feeling anxiety or if I'm having digestive system issues, I'll hold them at my like stomach level or, okay. or just hold them in my hand, whatever right. it is. Um, so for, there's three different approaches that I've taken. One of them is to like calm your nervous system or calm my nervous system and maintain my boundaries. So I'm not soaking up everybody else's issues. Okay. You know, that, especially when it comes to my son, when he was in high school and when he was in middle school and he was constantly having dramas because, mm -hmm. you know, that's what kids of that age do. Right. It was hard not to feel protective or have, you know, get myself into a, a bit of a lather over whatever his issue was. His issue was his issue. I need to filter that out. Right. So for dealing with that, I usually reached for either amber or obsidian. Amber is like the sap, it's the fossilized sap, or hardened yeah. sap of, of trees. Right. And the way that I look at that is, and it, I mean, it's, it's this, these are traditional uses for these two stones. But mm -hmm. the way that I look at them is that the sap of the tree is like our blood. It's like the fire of the body. And by reaching for the amber, which is a pure and solid piece, entity, if you will, that's been here for thousands of years, it's filtered out and held its boundaries. You know, all the, the trees filtered out and, and created this pure amber. And so by holding that, I'm asking myself to do the same with my energy field. So I am like the amber and the energy around me, my son's dramas or whatever's happening around me gets filtered out just like the tree's trunk would right. filter it out. Um, the reason or the, the reason, well, obsidian is a good grounding stone, but obsidian is also born from fire. It is originally lava that got, you know, shot up through the earth as it were, and then hardened and compressed as it, as it uh, cooled. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times then, you know, buried in the earth for a long time and all that afterwards. But so obsidian is another one that's good. It's often was used in um, older societies. It was turned into like arrowheads and sharp edges for Right, because it's blades. like a glass almost. Yeah, exactly. So it can cut away the stuff that isn't good for me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I didn't put a sharp piece of obsidian in my pocket. <laughs> you know, <laughs> So that's, that one's, those are a good set. Either of them or both of them are good to carry with me. I often carry them with me or for me, the amber, especially if there's been a lot of emotional upset in my household, I'll, you know, put a piece by my, my bedside or in my pocket while I'm sleeping to just kind of help me not absorb everybody else's mm -hmm. dramas. The next approach that I've done is clearing and restoring my boundaries. So yeah, you know, if I'm smart and I acted ahead of time, I got my amber, my obsidian, I didn't even soak up anyone else's stuff. I'm generally not that smart. <laughs> so when I have soaked up other things and I'm feeling crazy nuts inside and I'm feeling all jangled and, you know, uh, I reach for oftentimes either calcite or shungite. Shungite is a stone out of Russia, if I remember correctly, and it's strongly associated with the root chakra, but it's generally clearing. And right now, when you look look up information on it, you'll see it's for clearing EM emissions and helping to settle you. You know, that's that's what they talk about it for. What I've noticed is that it has a real strong cleansing and clearing effect. So all that jangled internalness will just settle and it, it feels as if it's being just like a wave it just moves outward and mm -hmm. clears. Calcite is another one that is often um, considered one that doesn't even need to be cleared. Like shungite, I, I wash that every now and then in water or I put it in the moon or the sunshine to clear it and help it, you know, clear itself. Whereas calcite, you don't need to do that as much it tends to just maintain a clear vibration. So that's another one that I keep, I just keep that. I have a big chunk of that next to my bedside. And if I know that I'm going into a situation during the day, that's going to be challenging to my nervous system. I know I'm going to a party. That's always overwhelming for me. 
I know that I have to go deal with a tense issue at work. I might have to have a confrontation or a, a discussion or personnel review, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just garden variety stuff, but I know it's going to be a little bit rough for me emotionally, especially. I'll reach for calcite and carry that with me through the day. And then the last approach that I use when I'm working with minerals or with rocks or stones is to think about rebuilding and taking care of myself. So the really obvious ones that I, and honestly, they're obvious for a good reason, are the quartz family, particularly rose quartz and cit um, citrine, which is essentially a yellow form of quartz. Mm -hmm. Those two are associated with the heart chakra and the citrine is associated with the second and third chakras, but also the root. It's sort of like the lower body and then the rose quartz kind of covers the upper body up to the third eye. Amethyst is the third eye and the crown. <clears throat> but really it's the, the rose quartz and the citrine that are the important ones when you're exhausted because a lot of times you haven't taken care of your body. Those two help you rebalance and restore the energy centers in, in your body. Mm -hmm. They can help with things like reducing anxiety and getting your thoughts to ground themselves instead of getting all just staying in your head, help you remember what your body feels like. Help you just remember to just be present here and now and realize that you're strong. You're a lot stronger than you think you are. The other one that I pick up is rhodochrosite, which is fairly common, not very expensive, but sometimes I've found a little harder to get a hold of in, at times, um, but it's not that hard. And it's really a stone of self-love. And it's oftentimes billed as a stone about finding love. And that that there's that part of it. But it's really about finding love, enough love to care for yourself. And remember to take care of yourself, to allow the abundance and the love and the support to come in and give you what you need to keep moving. So those are my, like, rocks. Your rocks. <laughs> my rocks. Your rocks. Yeah. And I think, I mean, personally, I think rocks are an important part, just like the plants are important. Well, you, even if you maybe, I don't believe is the right word, but if you have them with you, the intention is there maybe. Exactly. And your yeah. mindfulness about it. So. Yes. Yes. And then there's three herbs that I like as you're starting to feel, well, whether you're feeling your nervous system settled or not, um, these three are ones that even well well after I was done with exhaustion, I've kept them in my life. And that's linden, which is particularly good at settling a jangled nervous system like from travel or from other things like travel was one. But if you've gotten, I don't know, just life is busy. Mm -hmm. You, you want to settle yourself down. Linden's very good with that. Right. Tulsi is good for general helping you support yourself. It works a lot through the heart center. But it helps you just stay kind of mostly even keel, helps you bring balance. And Bacopa Monterey is very soothing to the nervous system. Um, it's especially helpful when you go straight into your head and you want to escape through your head. So heady escapes are things like wanting to take cannabis or smoking or, you know, those escapism things. Jumping into online gaming and wanting to lose yourself into that. Bacopa Monterey is really good for helping soothe your nervous system to the point where you feel like it's okay to be in your body. At okay. least that's my experience of it. Well, now you've taken all these herbs and teas and you've got your po pockets are laden with rocks. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's your nerves now. So now your ner nerves are more settled. You know, how do you, how do you, well, kill the som insomnia yeah. or eliminate insomnia? <laughs> right. Because insomnia feels like a battle, doesn't it? It's, you know, good sleep habits. That's so you're saying step. like, uh, you're, you're going to tell me like, you know, shut off my iPhone before I go to bed. Yeah. yeah. Like at so least a half it. an so, hour before. Yeah. So, yeah. so turning off our devices at least a half hour and sleeping in a darkened room is possible, right? Yeah. Or like even wearing a sleep mask. You know, if you can't, if you're, if you're living in a situation where you're definitely going to have light in your room, you know, even a little bit of light, a sleep mask is a good idea, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, that's part of it. Um, it also includes the kind of like good sleep habits include the rituals that you do for before you go to bed. Like, do you take a shower every night before you go to bed or splash your face with water? Maybe right. you do, maybe you don't. But doing the same thing every night. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Knowing that you're always going to get into your pajamas and then you make your cup of tea for 
for bed and you sip your tea and just give yourself time to be for that, you know, half hour. And then you set your sleep timer and you climb into bed. That would be a, you know, an effective sleep ritual. And you do it every night. So without fail. What herbs would you use for, for the that? herbal tea? Yeah, mm -hmm. the herbal tea. Are you talking about before bed or throughout the day? Well, no, I mean, before bed, I mean, we're talking about those rituals. And if you're talking about adding you know, maybe a cup of herbal tea before bed, what would what would you recommend? There's a variety of herbs that are really good. And I'm just going to mention a few of them because this is another category where you start you, to get into a lot of the nervous system herbs as well. You could be a whole show just devoted yeah. to this section. Right. But passion flower and California cop poppy are two really good ones for sedating, quieting your nervous system, but also quieting your mind so that you your mind and body are ready for sleep. They're, I think of them as being a uh, mild to middling, which is oftentimes plenty for most people. If you really, they aren't enough, valerian root or valerian flower can be really powerful. Those two tend to be like knock your socks off. Valerian, the valerian, valerian in general, mm -hmm. knock your socks off. It'll put you straight to sleep. Um, some people are overstimulated by valerian. And a lot of times I don't have scientific data on this. I did hear Thomas easily mention this and I noticed that he's probably right. People who have find valerian stimulating may well be so deep into exhaustion that they're experiencing something akin to empty fire where instead of doing what the herb one would expect it to do, which is really sedate you and put you to sleep, it's overstimulating you because your nervous system and your, your body in general are so exhausted they don't know what to do, doesn't know what to do, to do with it. So, you know, that's the caveat there. But, you know, valerian root's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, blue vervain is a really good herb if you tend to hold your tension in your upper body, particularly in your shoulders, neck region, upper chest, mm -hmm. and pairing that with yarrow flower essence is really powerful for helping you quiet yourself just before bed and clear yourself. The flower essence just helps get the emotional stuff of the day out, helps to clear that out. And the blue vervain helps your energy drop back down into your lower energy centers or your lower body, which helps release the tension, which helps you relax enough so you can sleep. Mm -hmm. And then another one that's a real classic particularly with small children but also children of all ages is hops with a little bit of honey and or um steeped in some warm milk so like if you're making warm milk a lot of times warm just warm milk mm -hmm. has been a classic nighttime ritual for people and um especially for when you're you know putting babies and, and small children to bed right but it works for us grown-ups too and adding a little bit of hops as you're warming it can help you know, bring in, it adds a little bit of bitterness. So you might want to sweeten that with a little bit of honey to, you know, make it more palatable, but it becomes just this wonderful, warm, soothing drink. So that's mm. another good one. Well, I mean, before we talked about bed, we had asked about if you take herbs throughout the day, is there, is there any um, herbs for uh, insomnia that, you know, that you could take throughout the day? Right. Yeah. That throughout the day herbs, there's a, there's a few of them that help you find balance and they're really, they're good for helping you support your nervous system and allowing your body to process and deal with everything as it comes so that when it's time for bed, your body's ready to be ready for bed instead of now you've got this huge backlog and your mind and body are like, oh my God, we got to process all this stuff so we can't really sleep properly. Mm -hmm. So which ones, um, which, which, you know, so which herbs would someone be looking at for that during the day? So my three favorites are Tulsi, chamomile, and bacopa. And the bacopa monary is one that I actually, you can take it internally, and I have done. But a lot of times I'll um, make that into an herbal oil, and then I'll just use a little bit of that oil throughout the day to help my nervous system settle down. I might use it as a hand lotion or you know, as part of my, you know, moisturizing for my face. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll just use it as like literally a dot on my forehead 
or on my throat or my heart chakra area or on my wrist, you know, one of those mm -hmm. pressure points. Right. So that helps, you know, just helps your nervous system rebuild itself, mm -hmm. stay calm, rebuild itself. Tulsi, you know, I take that as a T mostly and that same thing. Chamomile, same thing. It just helps your body balance and maintain itself. Um, so yeah, those are my three favorites for through the day. That oat straw combination, though, is another good one for just daily support. All right. So we got sleep covered and we got rest covered. So what's next in, that you can do to help yourself here? Oh, two of the fun ones, diet and fitness. That's it, everyone. I'm, I'm done. I'm yeah, on. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, diet and fitness. So are you talking about the usual stuff, you know, eat healthy, balanced diet, get regular cardio and all that? Yeah, sort of. I mean, the thing about those guidelines and the regular guidelines is that they can be really, really hard to actually do when life is crazy nuts busy. Sure. Or when everything's, you know, coming at you or you've said yes to too many things. It's really hard to say, oh yeah, and I'm going to get a workout in it. Oh, and I'm going to have a really healthy diet and eat three squares and all of that. Oh, you might have some burnout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so what do you do then? Uh, the first thing I think you really need to do is give yourself a few moments hours to sit down and really just take a look at yourself and your environment. I mean, what, what are the areas you, you take a look at what areas you could tweak realistically, what can you tweak in your diet or your exercise program to best help you? You know, for instance, if everything's nuts, it's always busy and you are eating no breakfast, eating lunch out every day, and then grabbing a dinner on the fly as you're racing off to the next thing. And 75% of that is out to eat food of some form. And the other 25% isn't actually home cooked. And, you know, you're lucky if you actually cook at home once a week, you know, mm -hmm. that's where you're at. Then looking at just how can you eliminate some of the out to eat and replace it with reasonable homemade foods, you know, right. buy the stuff to make a very simple salad and keep make salad dressing on you know, your Sunday night or whatever, you know, on one of the days of the weekend, you pick an hour and you're going to make three simple salad dressings that you just keep. And then you're going to buy some lettuce and some already chopped carrots and, you know, a few just fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, your, your on the fly quick meal can become, well, let's grab these three vegetables, throw them in a plastic container and, pop some salad dressing on that. That's my, or, you know, bring a little small container of salad dressing, stick that in there. And that's not going to be for that, that one meal, that one lunch is not going to be McDonald's. It'll be my salad, mm -hmm. you know, doing little things to try to tweak your diet just in favor of things that don't include preservatives and things that don't include artificial stuff and things that include more fresh vegetables. Fresh can mean cooked, mm -hmm. but you know, Actually, you saw the vegetable before it got cooked. <laughs> you know? All right. Um, there's some kinds of uh, things that you want to uh, bring into your diet. Right. Yes. Like so, yeah, the other thing, kind of thank you. The other thing is looking at what are the types of energies that you're dealing with. Like, for instance, if you're dealing with a lot of anger and irritability, your moods are swinging a lot especially if you've got heat signs, like you're having hot flashes off and on, or you're having night sweats. You're just like too hot all the time or randomly, even though you probably shouldn't be. And it's not that you have a fever. You just are feeling too hot all the time. A lot of times that'll indicate bitters would be a really good thing to add to your diet because all of those are signs of what's talked about in Ayurveda as well as in Chinese medicine and traditional Western herbalism as being like a liver imbalance or a liver heat. Mm -hmm. essentially what's happening on a more chemical nature is that your body's overproducing cortisols. Cortisols are the base chemicals of our um, fight or flight response of all of the adrenal gland or adrenal chemicals. Mm -hmm. They are um, also linked with estrogens. So the reason why this particular set of symptoms, the anger, irritability, mood swings, and heat issues like hot flashes and night sweats are also a part of perimenopause. 
um, signs and menopausal issues is because those are estrogen based hormones. So cortisols or cortisones are estrogen based as well. And your liver does all the chemical production and managing of that, like dealing with the clearing it out of your system. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly exhausted because you're constantly stressed out, then you're constantly creating all these extra estrogen based chemicals in your body. And your liver is now working its butt off trying to process the excess stuff. And if it's not doing a good enough job, then you start getting things like irritability, anger, mood swings, hot, too hot, too cold, you know, too hot flashes or whatever, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Bitters can help to give your liver the stimulation and the support it needs to better handle that situation. On the other hand, if instead what you're dealing with is things more like you have digestive upset, you're dealing with anxiety stomach or IBS where you have you know, sudden like need to get to the bathroom, um, constipation and diarrhea, swinging back and forth or one or the other. So it's all like digestive upset kinds of things. Then you might want to look more towards sours and sours can be things like pickles, you know, just vinegar pickles, whatever, get me or whatever, getty pickles. What are those? Gertie pickles. <laughs> I can't remember. It starts with a G. Anyway, it's a brand name. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But whether it's you know, <laughs> whether it's pickles that you bought from the grocery store right off the regular shelf and they weren't from the cold department, or whether it's a handmade ferment like a kombucha with live cultures, or mm -hmm. you know, yogurt that has live cultures in it, you know, live probiotic style fermented foods or drinks, all of those contain a certain amount of sour. And those sours help your digest help to help to support your digestive system and the microbiome in your digestive system. And if the microbiome in your digestive system is happy, your nervous system of your digestive system also tends to be happier. Mm -hmm. And that helps to eliminate a lot of that unpleasant digestive issue that comes with exhaustion. So that's what the sours. So that's another thing that you could take a look and say, well, you know, which direction am I tending more? Can I add more sours to my diet? So one of the things that, um, you know, people will do is, is, um, to battle this is they'll, they'll use to try to find energy. Yes. You know, sources of yes. food, whether it's food or, or stimulants, what would be some good energy sources for them? Yes. Avoiding empty carbs. Like you don't want to race and get that Snickers bar. Because while well, Snickers bar has some nuts in it, which might be good for you, mostly it's got a lot of sugar. It sure does. Yeah. And sugar is, you know, not a horrible energy source if you're hiking the PCT, then it's a great energy source. But if you're just having an average day and yeah, you're going from one thing to another, but and your your energy is low because you're exhausted, then bumping it up with sugar is an artificial uh, and it's gonna it's an artificial energy source in that it's going to be short lived. So it'll, you'll have a little energy and then you'll crash and it'll be a lot worse. And what you've ended up doing in doing that is robbed your nervous system from the energy it needs to mm -hmm. stay relatively well balanced right. and right the whole situation. So instead, what you want to look for is how can you get better good fats into your diet? So good fats are things like olive oil or Various other plant oils. I'm just gonna. There's so many of them. Like like a coconut. Yeah, a coconut exactly. Like be, a you know. Yeah, exactly. Like right. a coconut oil or that sort of thing. Um, animal fats can be good, but really they're only good if you're looking at a grass fed, uh, but organic. Even then, they're, they're, all of that. They're heavier than than they that, and they're and they have they a are. lot of. Um, I think the saturated fats are in there. Yes, yeah. there is. And it's, and yeah, so it's not the I'm same. Not, so I'm not good necessarily. Fats. Yeah, I'm not necessarily a strong advocate for animal-based fats as a health. As a good energy source. As a good energy source. Yeah, and I'm not saying you can't be. You don't have to be vegetarian to recover from exhaustion. No. Meat diet is actually perfectly fine. Just choose wisely. Right. Um, but good fats, complex carbohydrates are good. So not the white rice. Not so good. Instead, go for you know brown rice or one of the other um, rices that are like the that forbidden black rice that includes the the husk, hull, the hull, the hull yeah. you know, or yeah. the there's a brown one. I forgot what the name of that one is, but 
you know, brown rice is, sure. you know, um, whole wheat, not white bread, right, not but refined. whole, yeah. So those kinds of things are good. If you're going to go for carbohydrates in the form of sugars, fruit is definitely sugary, but it also offers more complexity that allows your body. As buffers, man. Yeah. So the reason we're looking at complex as opposed to simple is because it helps your insulin system mm -hmm. balance more properly. So when you have complex, a complex grain, for instance, your body will take longer to process it through the whole entire thing, which causes the energy of it to last longer and also softens the curve of how the energy comes on and how the energy leaves. And if you soften that curve, then that's better for your whole entire system. It also makes it easier for your liver to process the insulin aspect of it. So, you know, those would be things. Um, a lot of times herbalists talk about really intense um, herbs like reishi and rhodiola for really building your energy. Mm -hmm. The problem I have with those is they're really great if you're just at the very beginning of exhaustion. If you're not, if you're in the going in the wrong direction and realizing that you're going in the wrong direction and you're willing to take the time to change your lifestyle to better support you, reishi and, and rhodiola and other really strong stimulants and adaptogen herbs are good mm -hmm. for it, can be very good. The problem is that if we get deeper into exhaustion, those are much too much for our systems. They are offering or pushing us much harder and driving, which is part of what gets you into exhaustion in the first place anyway. So then you want to look at adaptogen-like herbs that are not as strong. So Tulsi or shiitake mushrooms, for instance. Shiitake mushrooms are really good at giving you energy, but it's a very gentle, supportive building of your system. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about Tulsi already. I mean that. Yeah. So those are, do those first, especially if you're deep into exhaustion. Try, you know, stuff like that first. And then as you feel your energy increasing and you're starting to feel better, then look at like reishi or rhodiola or ginseng. And look at those um, not in heavy doses, but in lighter doses if you're going to be using them long term. Because the lighter doses of them a lot of times will help your body adjust itself and reminds it. it's kind of like a reminder every day oh remember you've got to take care of yourself you've got to you know mm -hmm. so so the other thing then is what seems like counter to what you would want to do is you, you want to eliminate the stimulants yes yeah so, you want so, to eliminate all like even like i said even the black teas and the oolongs it's too stimulating maybe all camellias are too stimulating Right. And Sugar, Red Bull, coffee, even decaffeinated coffee. It does not actually, it's not devoid of, of stimulation. Coffee that's decaffeinated still has a percentage of caffeine in it. And coffee itself is a fiery laxative. So that's strong medicine. And if you're exhausted, you don't want strong medicine. You need to be very gentle. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's also things like the artificial stuff. You know, we talked about artificial sweeteners, artificial colors, things that aren't natural. Yeah. You know, want to live from yeah. those things. They just, they build up. Yep. And then escape tools. Right. Your escape tools, like your, your, your extra glass of wine or mm -hmm. your beer, or maybe yeah. you like cannabis. Yeah. The, ob <laughs> the obvious ones are the state alt altered mind ones, the alcohol, the um, tobacco, smoking, yeah. and cannabis yeah. in all its forms, and then other illicit drugs that we won't even start listing. No, those kinds fine. of things are obvious. You know, get rid of get rid of those or avoid those. But like you said before, it's also the escapism that isn't necessarily imbibed. You know, if you're playing video games and escaping into them and not giving yourself rest, especially if the video games you're playing are stimulating. Mm -hmm. That's, you need to get out of that. It doesn't mean you're done playing video games forever. It just means right now where you're recovering from exhaustion, you don't or you severely limit it for a while until your energy starts to recover. If video games are a place that you, really gives you joy, then you don't necessarily have to get rid of them, but do it early in the day. Limit it to just an hour. 
try to aim for video games that aren't as much running around shooting things and, you know, being in a state of alarm, but instead are maybe quieter problem solving games that are less you know stressful to your immune system or to your nervous system rather, mm -hmm. you know? Well, the last thing that really is the, the one where it gets to be the would be fitness. Yeah. Fitness is a challenging one because we get all these messages that we're supposed to be doing all this cardiovascular stuff. And, and then as soon as you turn like 40, everyone's like, Oh, are you doing all the weightlifting? You know, you should be doing CrossFit and, well, those aren't bad things, but if you walk away from them and you're tired and a few hours later you're still tired, what have you done? Yeah, I think when you get done with those, you have a feeling of euphoria because of all the, right. the hormones. That's great. That's what you want. But if you crash yeah. all afternoon after that, after you're, you're dealing with all these other things, then maybe it's time to rethink the volume of that workout maybe or right. the intensity of that workout. There's nothing yes. wrong with working out. It's just how do you how do you balance it with what else you're dealing with yeah and realizing that things like yoga can be an actual workout yeah I mean, that's true just because you're not getting your heart racing and you're not running around and sweating doesn't mean you aren't working or even tai chi tai chi is yeah, so. yeah tai chi qigong right it's another i mean so my kind of like advice or suggestion would be recognize if the extra how the exercise makes you feel a few hours after you're done with it if you crash, if you're tired, if you're exhausted, if you feel like you have to have a nap that afternoon because you did your workout in the morning, probably that's not the right exercise for you right now if you've been in a state of exhaustion. If you're not in a state of exhaustion and this is a new exercise program, that's like completely different. But when you're dealing with recovering from burnout, heavy workouts aren't always a good thing. It's better to be very gentle with your workout, you know? Right, right. Well, so burnout's a big thing. So check your signs. Remember, we've got that book that we mentioned or that article on um, the telltale signs of burnout. Do you have them by Sherry Board mm -hmm. uh, Carter um, from Psychology? Today. We'll have the link. So um, make sure you can recognize it and then start to, once you recognize it, start to work on those tools that, um, that we talked about, getting more rest if you can, um, using herbs to help you with that. Um, and we have a whole list of those. Those will be on the show notes as well. Right. And, you know, actually, as you're talking about it, I know that there are at least two sleep articles that we've done. And we've done a couple of articles on dealing with natural approaches to like anxiety and depression. So I'll make sure I include those links from the Practical Herbalist. Yes. And uh, so... Definitely use those um, to help in your in your rebuilding from burnout, mm -hmm. um, and you know generally you know just you know take care of yourself. This you, you yeah. got here because you lost track. Oh yeah, and we I sure it. did. We all do it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I've done it. You know, and and you know even now you have to be cognizant. I have to be cognizant of it. So, so if you're feeling this way, this would be a great way for you to identify it, and then here's some methods to help you get yourself back on track. Yeah, and don't forget to. Put an herb on it. The statements made about herbs and products on this podcast have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration, FDA. They're not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided on this podcast or any affiliated websites is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. You should not use the information on this podcast and its affiliated websites for a diagnosis or treatment of any health problem. Always consult with healthcare professional before starting any new vitamins, supplements, diet, or exercise program before taking any medication or if you have or suspect you might have a health problem. Any testimonials, questions or case studies are based on individual results and do not constitute a guarantee that you will achieve the same results.